few years ago, I made a video called What is an Osteochondroma? But I kind of want to dive deeper into the core subject behind that video, which is multiple hereditary exostosis. You see, a couple of years ago, I didn't know everything that I know now. That's the beauty about patient advocacy and patient research is that you keep learning and you keep understanding yourself and your body a lot better. And so a couple of years ago, all I thought was multiple hereditary exostosis was a bone disorder. Actually, it's way more than just a bone disorder. The osteochondromas that we have are just a symptom of the genetic defect that multiple hereditary exostosis or hereditary multiple exostosis or multiple osteochondromatitis causes. Um, there are multiple names for MAT just depending on where you live. And all of those names actually focus on the bones and not the genetic defect that it causes. When you have MAT, you don't just have bone tumors. You have a heparin sulfate defect. And heparin sulfate is essential to the cells. It's like a nucleus in the sense that it's an essential function, but the heparin sulfate controls the extracellular communications. And that's essential in every single cell. So every part of our body is dysfunctional. Now we don't know how this truly affects every single MAG year because there's not research that dives deeply into that yet. Um, Dr. Yamaguchi has started some research, but um, a lot of the powers that be tend to focus on the bones when the real problem lies in the heparin sulfate deficiency. Now, if you have MAG, there is a chance that you also might deal with neurological problems such as severe migraines, symptoms that mimic MS, but no lesions. You might have neurodiversity traits like autism, Asperger's, um, ADHD. You might have lung issues. You might have asthma. You might have trouble breathing. You might have dysautonomia. You might have kidney issues. You might have bladder issues. You might have menstrual issues. You might have gastric issues. You, there are so many connected comorbidities that are related to the deficiency in heparin sulfate that I personally experience and I've interviewed a lot of MHEers who experience it too. So going forward, I believe the way that we can combat this misinformation is to no longer call it a bone disorder. It's not a bone disorder. It's a systemic rare disease. And if we keep focusing on the bones, we're never going to know how MAG actually affects us, which is a problem because we look so much gaslighting as it is because we have a rare disease. Imagine if all of our problems that we've dealt with were known all along with our multiple hereditary exostosis diagnosis, yet no doctor actually knew that. That's what I think happens. Um, so again, let's just move forward and let's start focusing patient advocacy on the heparin sulfate. Let's start talking about it. I'm seeing some groups on Facebook start to talk about it, which is a beautiful thing. If you remember last year around March, I was ostracized for trying to talk about it. So I'm so thankful to see people talking about it. And if you have MAT, leave a comment below and tell me what you live with. Even if you think it's a symptom that's not related to MAT, like shortness of breath, dizziness, migraines, anything, cyclic vomiting, go ahead and leave a comment below and let me know what you deal with. You'd be really surprised to find out if it's related to heparin sulfate.